to be on this platform to have shared in a different capacity with you earlier. But see, everything that I do starts with one fundamental thing, and that's giving God honor for the ability to be able to use this voice that he's given me to be able to create shifts and transitions in the productivity of those that I work with. So I'm excited today about creating your own luck because most people say, well, what is that? And Stacey, you know, you believe that God is ahead of your life and you know, you don't, we don't believe in luck. See, luck is not something that just drops out of the sky. Like 90% of us would love to be lucky enough to win the lotto if you play. Or you want a pot of gold to just drop on your head. Would be kind of nice. But see, luck is something that you have to create. It's the work. You know, we talk about luck is when preparation meets opportunity, but it goes beyond that. It goes beyond just the same. It is the very thing that you declare and decree that you want to do on this planet. The thing that you have been given your divine assignment. That's how the birth of Destiny Designers University came about. Understanding that God has placed on each of us our own unique and divine calling. See, a lot of us out here, we, we spend a lot of time trying to figure this thing called life out. We get a little confused because we want to watch everybody else's greatness, but we never step into ours. We get confused because we're so caught up in what's happening in the world and what we see other people doing. But many people have said it, and the best way to say it is don't run around trying to be copies of other people. Be your own unique individual. So in order to create this luck, in order to really understand how to design that destiny, there's some steps you have to take. There's some things that you need to do in order to be in that place. See, today we're at the Change the World Summit. And changing the world, that's, that's a large task if you take it all at one bite. But if each one of us start, as my sister Darlene said, on working on yourself, if you start with changing who you are, if you start with one person at a time, can you imagine what this world will look like? Now, I'm, I'm going to share something with you that I've really never even shared on the platform before, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about why this is so personal to me. See, as I was going through and getting to the stage in my life post-college, what I wanted to do, the things that really excited me, what I wanted to take my education and use with that education to create a life for myself, I started to talk myself out of the very gift I've been given. See, I don't know if anybody out there can relate that you know in your gut, in your soul, deep down inside of you what you've been given. But then you start playing stories in your head that make you second guess your value. You start to second guess, do I have enough? Am I enough? Is this really what I should be doing? You know, I, I, don't, I don't sound like that person or I haven't produced this kind of product or I'm not sure if my service is going to be valued in the world. And we start to play this over and over in our heads. But we can't get to that destiny. We can't create the thing that we're looking to create if we don't do this first thing. And I want you to put this in the feed. Uncover and shed. Hashtag uncover and shed. See, when we're able to uncover where these stories started, where these opportunities for us to have these self-limiting behaviors began, then we can start to go deep. We can start to really understand where in the world did we start feeling that we weren't enough? Marianne Williamson says it best. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. And when we think about that, when we think about those moments, especially those of you watching, those of you that are attracted to the Change the World movement because you're cut from the same cloth. You know that Dr. Willie Jolly, you know that Che and Trevor and everybody that's come on this platform believes in self-improvement, self-development, taking their gifts and talents to the next level will be challenged. Because somewhere along the line, our mindset can get a little confused. So for me, it was, Oh, Stacey, you know, you, you did a great job. You can do great doing, you know, this speaking. And wow, I really see that for you. But when I started out, there weren't a lot of women who were holding that space. There weren't a lot of voices of strength and power that stood amongst the masters, that stood as the top 
motivational, inspirational speakers. So I thought it might be a little difficult to forge out and to declare this space, even though I knew what I had been given was mine. But I was playing this story in my head. And I had to get to the point where I just said, stop. Like, enough is enough. What is holding you back from your own greatness? Are you scared of your own success? So I had to uncover that. I had to go deep and find out what I needed to shed. And it was a conversation with my husband that helped me really understand what I've been given. I said, honey, anybody can do you know, what I'm doing. What, what's so special? He was like, do you see the reaction when you do your work? Do you see the reaction on the lives that are changed through the work that you're doing? He said, you would want to get on your knees and ask God forgiveness for overlooking what you have been given. See, if I didn't have that moment, that moment of clarity to uncover and shed what was not benefiting my growth and enabling me to walk in my destiny, I wouldn't be standing before you today. So there might be something that you need to think about, something that you need to do a little bit more introspection on. See, we can run and run and run and we can smile on the outside and we can look good to the world and we can go to every conference and we're suited and booted and we're ready to take notes and invest. But if we don't uncover and shed those self-limiting behaviors, then we self-sabotage our ability to create the very life we were intended to create. Why is this so key? Because you need to take the next step, which is align by design. Put that in the feed. Hashtag align by design. See, the The basis of creating your own luck is understanding that in order for you to create the opportunities that don't exist, you need to align yourself by design with those who have shown you the proven strategies of success. And more than just in word and deed or being a friend in your head, you need to be connected with those who can help you move straight forward to your destiny. See, somebody out there is listening right now and understanding what I'm saying. It's it's resonating with you deep down in your soul. You understand that this Change the World Summit is one of the steps that you can take to align by design. One of the steps that you can take to create a new reality for yourself. See, I'm blessed to be able to have such wonderful people in my network to be able to work with George Frazier, who you just heard from, and be one of his faculty members and present at FraserNet each year, to be one of Les Brown's platinum speakers, to be able to be here with Dr. Willie Jolly with the Change Your World Summit, to be able to work with Susan Taylor in the National Cares Mentoring Movement, to be able to know Michael V. Roberts, black billionaire, to be able to just sit and talk with my beautiful sister, Lisa Nichols. See, I'm not saying all these names to impress you, but to impress upon you when you align by design, when you associate with people who can stretch your consciousness, who can make you dream a bigger dream than you could dream, you start to create the very thing that you're looking for. And aligning and and just being intentional about that is very important. See, when I had my opportunity to meet Mr. Brown, It was one of the most amazing days of my life. And some of you have heard me talk about it. I invested in going to an event where he was speaking. And I'm like, wow, you know, he's right here. He's he's coming to New York. You know, I I haven't been this close to him. A girlfriend of mine was helping to coordinate the event. I said, I just, I need to be there. I just need to be in the room and just listen. I was just sitting there in awe, like, wow, this is, this is what I do. This is, This is me, this is the speaking, the training, the development, the personal investment in myself that makes Stacey N.C. Grant. He had his son speaking with him, he had brought a speaker along that came and presented. Now she's a dear and good friend of mine, Star Babatoon. And as I was listening to her and as I watched the other individuals that came on the stage, I'm like, I can do that. This is what I do. It's, It's, my voice needs to be heard on a wider scale. Because I was doing the work. I was preparing, so it wasn't luck that I met him. It was preparing for the opportunity for me to create my own luck. So the presentation happened. He came off, and everybody's swarming Mr. Brown. They're trying to buy his products. They want to meet him. They want to shake his hand. And I'm sitting there, and I'm I'm like, okay, I'm going to wait my turn. And I'm talking to myself, and I'm getting geared up. Then I strut on up, and the first thing I do is I purchase his CD set. Because, you know, you heard Trevor say it before. Don't expect others to invest in you at a level higher than you're willing to invest in yourself. 
So I bought that CD set and I took it to him and I, I said, Mr. Brown, it's a pleasure to meet you. That was a wonderful presentation. I'm a mother of two sons. If my sons grow up to be as eloquent as yours, I'd be so excited and just thrilled to be able to have them contribute to our global marketplace that way. And I said, would you mind signing my CD set? And I took out a black marker and he signed it. And then I shook his hand and I said, thank you again. And I said, but you know, Mr. Brown, when you were speaking, it was just, it was electrifying, just the way that you're able to translate words into feeling that folks can from the toes and the ball of their feet straight to the top of their head be inspired to just go out and take over the world. And he turned around and he looked at me and he said, young lady, with your poise and your personality, you'd be great in this business. And that was the moment where Stacy really came out. I put my hands on my hip and I said, I am in this business, Mr. Brown. That's why I need to work with you. <laughs> so I was, I was nervous as all get out saying it, but it just blurted out because I was out here doing the work, but I needed the additional training. I needed the additional opportunity to hone in and tune up those skills that I had. And I said, here's my card. And I boldly wrote my cell phone number on the back of the card. And here's the big clincher. Talk about big, bold moves. I took the card and I put it right in his lapel. I opened the jacket and put it in. Who am I to do such a thing? But at that moment, I knew the opportunity was there. The moment that I wanted to create was right in front of me. And I stuck the card in his blazer. And I said, it was a pleasure meeting you. And I ran to the ladies' room. <laughs> I couldn't believe I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I just talked to Les Brown, oh my God. And I put his card, and my card in his vest, and I left. And I didn't think anything of it. Two days later, I'm driving, and my phone rings, and you know, I look down, and I see a number I didn't recognize, and I said, okay, I'll get back to it later. When I checked the voicemail, guess who was on the line? It was Mr. Brown. I started screaming. Now, I didn't even call Mr. Brown back. I was just screaming at the fact that he was on my phone. He said he was impressed by our meeting. He wanted to talk to me about working with him and being a part of his platinum program. I called my husband, screaming, like, oh my God, it's the last Brown just called me. He thought I had an accident or something. He was like, hun, hun, calm down, calm down, breathe. What's going on? I was just so excited that the opportunity, I stepped in to the opportunity and created my chance to align by design with the master motivational speaker on the planet and the rest is history and I'm, be able, I'm able to travel the country and the world with him speaking on platforms why do I tell you this see somebody watching today this change the world summit you have a story inside of you you have a product you have a servant service there's a community building you want to create there's something that you know you want to do and you know there's someone that's at the top of their game the a game that you want to align yourself with but you have to be able to step out and create those opportunities. You have to decide right now, who is that person? You know, people talk to me all the time about Oprah and the fact that, you know, the TV pilot that I'm doing and, and giving examples or compliments, and I receive all of them. But Oprah said it best to a guest. She said, you don't want to be like me. You want to be better than me. You want to do the thing that you've been given to do because I can't do George Frazier's work. Che can't do... Les Brown's work. Willie Jolly can't do Oprah Winfrey's work. We've all been given our own divine assignment. But we have to align ourselves with those who are walking the path that will lead us to the next best version of ourselves. And when we start that alignment, when we're clear about where we're going, then we're able to evaluate who sits in the front row. Darlene brought that up. There's a whole poem dedicated to front row, and it's by Author Unknown. I love Author Unknown. There's a lot of things out there by Author Unknown. <laughs> but in this particular poem, it talks about what relationships make you lean and what relationships give you joy. Like when you hear the name, it's an instant smile. See, there's a common thread that you've been hearing at this Change the World Summit, and I hope everybody's been taking clear notes on that particular part because who sits in your front row tells me a lot about who you are. You know, there's a saying that my parents used to say all the time, show me your friends, show me who you are. Show me the people that you associate with. There was a study done that most people earn within $1,000 of their closest friends. So if you're hanging around nine broke people, who you think is going to be number 10? 
<laughs> but if you want to be around, I'm not just talking about broke financially. I'm talking about up here, the wealth of knowledge that you're able to create when you're talking with individuals who are challenging you on what you're learning, what you're investing in, what you're growing to, what skill sets you are improving on. And who sits in that front row? The person or the people that are going to enable you to see a bigger vision. Because you can't see the picture if you're in the frame. You can't see all of your greatness all at one time because you're still getting over that uncovering and shedding. You're still aligning yourself with the right people. And you have to have the right audience in your front row that is going to hold you accountable for the things that you say you want. And once you're able to do that, and evaluate who is in that front row. You can start working on the next level of development for you, which is your skill set. You can start figuring out what is it that I need to master? What is it that I need to focus on? So let me be very clear with you. You know, there's certain things that I love to do, and there's certain things that I hate to do like paperwork and accounting. You know, people who love to crunch numbers, I just like to cash checks. But you have to understand your strengths and your weaknesses. And you have to be able to look for help from those who are able to show you how to have a well-rounded balance for the future that you're building, especially if you're in business. Because just because you can bake a good cake doesn't mean you can run a bakery. So it means that you have to be very clear and purposeful on how you take that front row, how you take those strategic partnerships and relationships to the next level so that you can create your own luck, so that you can truly change the world one purpose at a time. And why is this important? Hashtag leave a legacy. We are here because we need to leave a legacy, not just for our current family members, but future generations. When I think about Steve Jobs, and God rest his soul, and all that he was able to accomplish in a short span of time on earth. How many of you knew that not only did Steve Jobs get fired from the company that he started, can you imagine that? Wouldn't that hurt your feelings if somebody fired you from your own job? <laughs> Someone fired you from your own dream? But he had a partner, and those of you that know the story know he was originally fired from Apple. But in that space of time, he was able to create two more companies. He created Pixar, and he created Next. I thought that was so fascinating that he didn't stop. He didn't get stuck in a rut. He didn't go back to the old story of feeling inadequate or that he couldn't do. He kept moving forward. And he kept using what he had been given. So maybe the first time around with Apple, it didn't work out. But that didn't take the knowledge and the skills that he had in his mind to be able to create one of the most and still profitable animation companies. And the technology from Next, that's what hired him back in Apple. That's how he came back and how he was able to take that particular company to a whole new level. Why am I mentioning that? We'll be talking about Steve Jobs for years to come. He created a legacy of excellence. You know, George talks about that all the time. You know, there's good, there's average, and there is excellent. There's amazing. When you use a product, when you have an experience, it's something that just takes you to a whole nother level. That's the kind of intensity that we need to live our lives with. That's the kind of way we need to be able to produce quality products, services to others. Now, here's, here's the thing. See, some of you might be listening and saying, Stacey, you know, creating your own luck, that, that sounds good. You, you told us to align by design. You, you, know, you told us what we need to do as far as developing our, our own skill set. You, you talked about the front row, aligning by design, all this stuff but I still don't know how to take the next step. I'm still not sure. I'm still intimidated by what I see other people doing. You know, something that I, one of my pastor, uh, uh, affirmation that she said, distractions come from looking around. You know, defeat comes from looking back. But deliverance comes from looking up. You have to stay focused on what your divine assignment is. That is how you're able to create your own luck, because what you've been given, nobody else has been given. You don't want to get to the end of your days, as Howard Thurman talked about it. You don't want all of your skills, your talents, everything that you were given, looking at you saying, I was here, but you never used me. You don't want to get to the end of life 
and have never lived. You want to be able to leave a legacy. Hashtag leave a legacy. The reason why we can talk about it, Steve Jobs, because he did more than just create a computer. He did more than just make millions of dollars. He changed the way we do business. When you talk about a young man, Zuckerberg and Facebook, who knew Facebook would even exist over a decade ago? But now even the government has a Facebook page. That's the kind of bold opportunities to be able to create new avenues for yourself begins. But here's what I know. I know that even though we're involved in the Changing the World Summit, even though we're listening to some of the top speakers on the planet, we're still going to have to fight through some background noise to get to the next best version of ourselves. Even though we're hearing the information, even though we know that it's true and it's resonating with us, we're still going to have to put up a certain level of intensity in order to grow to that next best version of yourself. And I'm going to give you a gift today on how to do that. It takes time and nobody up here in 30 minutes or 45 minutes or 60 minutes can give you every single nugget. All we can do is give you a piece. And I'm going to give you a piece of that today because I know that if you've been tuning in all day, if you've been taking notes all day, if you're seriously serious about where you're going for 2014, you're going to take careful notes because life is precious. It is not guaranteed. And every moment is a blessing. I thought that 2013, I'd had my fill of getting a phone call about people transitioning from this planet. I thought I would get a break when 2014 started. But it started out with a bang and just unexpected losses of life that have transitioned on. The most recent, a friend passing away in his apartment while my girlfriend, his wife, was away on business, 41 years old, and left a legacy of love and light. He had so many plans of things that he wanted to do. But today, he's not here. It was a sobering reminder once again that every time we wake up, every time we look up, every time we open our mouths, every time we interact with someone, just like George talked about the way to build relationships, the way to make people remember who you are, every conscious decision that we make, To be a blessing to someone else is one more step towards that legacy of creating a difference in our global world. Now, I wish I had a magic wand. I wish there was something that I could just sprinkle over everybody and we're all successful. Because if success was convenient, we'd all be successful. If everything that we wanted came easy, we'd all have it. But you have to go through some struggle. You have to push past the things that are uncomfortable, and you have to have that honest conversation with yourself as to what is next for you. But to do that, I'm going to give you something that my grandmother gave me. And those of you that have heard me before know how precious this is to me, and I'm going to share it with you today. I was nine, ten-ish, wanting to be a part of this opportunity at school to be in a play and didn't think I was the most popular girl or the one that would get the part and you know came home to my West Indian grandmother you know shout out to all the West Indians out there and in the conversation I mentioned not being lucky enough and she put her hands on her hip and she said luck luck not have nothing to do with it courage and will perseverance and skill these are the four leaves of Lux Clover now mind you I didn't even know what a clover was <laughs> I'm like, these Jamaicans have a saying for everything. But it wasn't until years later I understood what she was saying. Courage and will, perseverance and skill. These are the four leaves of Lux Clover. And the base of the Destiny Designers University, the base of how we take this information and create our own Lux starts with those four leaves of Lux Clover. Courage. How many of us have the courage to do the things that are uncomfortable, the things that are not easy, so that we can create the thing that we're looking for. See, discipline is a big part 
of enabling our courageous behavior. Because we can start out feeling good and you're going to leave this change the world summit. You're going to go out there and say, I can conquer the world. I can do this. I've listened to Dr. Willie Jolly. I've listened to Cheryl Wood. I've listened to George Frazier, every Darlene Brown, everyone who's been on the platform. And you feel like you can go out there and do it. But it's not just declaring that you can do it, but are you going to have the courage to keep moving when somebody tells you no? Are you going to have the courage to keep following your dream when your bank account might be upside down because the money is still circulating back in? Are you going to have the courage to be able to sacrifice some immediate desires and wants so that you can invest in the things that will help you get the skills necessary to succeed? When I think about this young woman that I met, it exemplified so much about courage to me. I was at an event speaking and she shared her story and she said, you know, I never graduated from high school. I got pregnant with my first child and my husband and I got married before I graduated. So I didn't have any formal education. And then we had two more kids. And my husband was the sole breadwinner for the family. And he came home last year and he said, babe, I'm tired. I'm working two jobs, sometimes three to get extra money to help us make it. But I can't do this anymore. I'm just tired. And she looked at him. She said, well, what, what am I going to do? I don't have any skills. I don't have a degree. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do to contribute. But there was something she could do. She could bake. She, everyone complimented her when she baked. She didn't think anything of it. It was just part of what she did as a mother, as a homemaker. She baked. But she took that and she created a small business. She said, well, maybe I can sell some cupcakes. Maybe I can sell some cakes. I can sell some cookies. And she stepped out. She had the courage to step out. Just like Martin Luther King Jr. says, faith is taking the first step, even if you don't see the staircase. No, she didn't have the degree. She didn't have all of the pedigree of a top pastry chef. But she knew in her gut that something she did when she cooked it up in that kitchen was so good, people kept talking about it days later. And from her having the courage to push forward, she started a company that is now growing in leaps and bounds. She is now contributing to her household. She is now being marketed all across the country because she had the courage to take action. See, it's easy to talk about the things that we want to do, the things that we want to get out of life. But how many of you are willing to take action? Hashtag action action despite the distraction. How many of you are willing to keep moving forward when you start writing the manuscript and you get interrupted, or you start purchasing that piece of real estate and the closing doesn't happen when you decided it was going to happen, or you are opening up a child care, or you're moving forward with building a partnership within a team or a multi-level organization, it doesn't seem like it's growing fast enough. How many of you have the courage to keep moving? See, those obstacles are cleverly disguised opportunities. Hear me clearly. Cleverly disguised opportunities for you to be tested on how much you really want this thing that you've been given. See, it's easy to be happy and motivated and excited and courageous when everything's going your way. But in the times of difficulty and of challenge, that you're able to push through shows just what you're made of and your ability to push past the things that might frighten you the most. Because it's not that fear doesn't exist, it's that you feel the fear and you do it anyway. It's that you have the courage to keep moving forward, even if you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel because the darkest hour is right before dawn. See, some of us, we're in here, we're, we're working hard, we're doing what we need to do, and we're like, if I could just get a break, if I could just get a break. But if you are able to just stay focused long enough and not quit before your blessing, that destiny that you're creating, that luck, which is translated into the action that you've taken, will be yours. Perseverance, oh, this is the one I love. Because it's easy to give up 
and not push forward. Everyone thinks it's sexy to be an entrepreneur and own your own business. Like, <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur. I own my own business. But nobody sees you when you're crying because you don't have enough clients. Or you're confused because you can't pay the rent for the space that you've opened up. Or you're struggling to just make ends meet. But I tell you this, every multimillionaire, every entrepreneur that has gotten to that other side, they had to go through some things. See, Les used to sleep on the floor of the Penobscot building in Detroit while he was giving motivational speeches. And he was going in the bathroom to wash up, trying to sneak and get away from the maintenance guy so they wouldn't know that he was sleeping because that wasn't allowed. But he knew he had a voice. He knew that there was something about telling his story, inspiring others to greatness that kept him going. He could have stopped. But he kept persevering. He kept moving forward. And today, look at the legacy that he's created. What if he had stopped? What if Dr. Willie Jolly stopped when he shared those challenges and things that have happened in his world? What if he stopped? Please don't stop. Please keep going. Because the world needs your unique gift. The world needs what you've been given to do. Courage and will, perseverance and skill. See, I, I'm just gonna share two things about will and skill. See, the will to do something, the will to get up in the morning, the will to create the discipline that you heard most of the speakers talk about, the will to share what you have has to come from deep inside of you. It has to come from a place that nobody else can touch, that you guard and protect your dream. You guard and protect that thing that you have that is going to make this world a better place. You guard it with your life and you fight for your dream. And you know that the will to do it will carry you forward. You know, like my friend Eric Thomas would say, you want to go after your dreams like you go after breath. To breathe in and to hold on to that breath. Do you know the story that he talks about with a young man that wanted to learn from a millionaire and he put him in the water and he went all the way down, he couldn't catch his breath. He, <gasps> he was gasping. That's the kind of fire that you need to go after when you're going after your goals and your dreams. The will to do it. You know, when the president asked back when they went to the moon, Russia went to the moon first, what's it gonna take for the US to go to the moon? And he said five words, the will to do it. When Les shared that story when we were on a call and talking, I said, wow, just five words, the will to do it. Do you have the will to do it? Do you have the will to create a legacy for your family? Do you have the will to create your product? Do you have the will to create your service? Do you have the will to start your conglomerate? Do you have the will to be the new Facebook? Do you have the will to set on fire the record that even Steve Jobs made with Apple? Somebody listening has the will to do something amazingly, incredibly outstanding outstandingly different than anything that's been set on the planet. But you have to keep moving. And you have to develop your skill set. You have to invest in yourself. If you don't invest in yourself, if you don't read, everyone has been saying the same thing. Success leaves clues. What are you reading? What conferences are you going to? What are you pouring into yourself? What are you being mastered by? For me, the very first thing that I need to be mastered by is the word of God, because I make no mistakes about saying that he is first and without him, I can do nothing. So if I master that and then I allow him to use my skills, my talent to be able to coach and train and facilitate growth with those that I work with, then my living is not in vain. If I continue to pour into myself the ability to hold a microphone in a way that is transformational, that I know there is no question, there's nobody that can host like me. I can take on Steve Harvey. I ain't scared because I've been doing my work. 10,000 hours of mastery, like the book, The Outliers. See, you don't get good sitting down on the sidelines. You get good getting in the game. And it doesn't matter if it's perfect. It doesn't matter if it's all lined up together. As Les would say, jump and grow your wings on the way down. If I waited for things to be perfect, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you right now. I messed this thing up from top to bottom, and I was able to align by design to get it right, to be focused on those things that would help me grow, the areas that I needed the discipline, the areas that I needed the coaching, the areas that I needed mastery. See, that doesn't happen by accident. You have to work on yourself. You have to develop that skill. You know, my teenager played, well, both my children played football, and they loved the sport. 
and I wasn't a fan. You know, some of you heard that story before. I'm not going to get into today, but now I'm a crazy football mom. But the thing about my eldest son that I tell him he has to apply across the board is the same sort of vigor and the same sort of fire when it comes to playing that game of football. See, that first quarter, it'll set the tone. It'll set the tone for what you want. It'll set the tone for where you're going. But there are four quarters in the game. And you have to be in the game. You have to be developing your skills constantly. He has to do the drills. They have to get down. They have to roll over. They have to jump up. The jumping jacks, it just doesn't come easy to get on the field and play as a team and make the blocks for the quarterback and get to the end zone. So where are you going? Where are you taking the ball? See, it's being passed to you right now. This is the Change the World Summit. It's not about us holding the ball and going to the end zone. It's how many people can grab on, how many people can get you to where you need to be. So think of all of us as we're up here speaking. We're pouring into you. We're giving you the tools necessary for you to succeed. We're blocking. We're blocking the negativity. We're blocking those people that are getting in your way. We're blocking the self-limiting thoughts that you may have so we can clear the way for you to run straight into the end zone. But you have to invest in yourself in order to do that. You have to work with those who are able to help you accomplish the next best version of yourself. See, I know I'm very clear that my voice is not going to resonate with everyone because I'm not designed to work with everyone. But I have my assignment. And those that are listening and who understand and who can hear my voice, who can understand where I am going from the depths of my heart to be of service to help you transform and change your current mindset to a broader base of opportunity will be the ones that answer the call. Those who hear it from Darlene, those who hear it from Dr. Willie Jolly, those who hear it from Dr. Joyce C. Frazier, you will be able to hear the voice of those of us who have been assigned to you creating your own love. There's no accident that you're here. There's no accident that this time has come. The question is, how fast are you willing to move towards your goals and dreams? See, I shared about lose, losing the lives of those that I love and friends and family members of friends and family members that seem to just keep coming in. But I say to you right now, what my grandmother gave me, those four leaves of Lux Clover, courage and will, perseverance and skill, have been able to ground me, have been able to bring a platform of productivity to the planet. And I'm able to honor my own legacy of my grandmother and my great-grandfather through it. Because guess what? Come to find out, my great-grandfather, who was a headmaster in Jamaica West Indies, he was the one that taught that to my grandmother because she was a student in the class. And he would gather kids together up on the rooftop every single day and have them repeat affirmations and she still remembered it. So when I was able to create my first product, when I was able to put that on my platform and then protect it. So hashtag the four leaves of Lux Clover, courage and will, perseverance and skill, but make sure you have the registered trademark next to it because that's how you protect the things that you bring to the planet. <laughs> my girl Lucinda Cross, she talks about don't, don't eat your cheese or expose your cheese when rats are around. I know I'm jacking it all up Lucinda, but the main thing is you have to protect the things that you're bringing to the world so that your legacy is protected, so that years later, others will be able to know you were here. The Steve Jobs, the new Mark Zuckerbergs, the new Oprah Winfrey's, the new George Frazier, Stacey and C. Grant, Trevor Otts, and Che Brown. This is your time. It's now or never. Your dreams can't wait. See, there's no casually waiting around for things to happen. We have to move with a certain sense of urgency. You know, some of us are too lax with our dreams. My husband has a saying in the house that he tells the kids that I'm allergic to average, and in this house, we are allergic to average. So if you don't want an average life, if you want an extraordinary life, if you want to do something different, now is the time. It's now or never. Your dreams can't wait. What are you waiting for? If you're waiting for it to be convenient, if you're waiting for the kids to get older, if you're waiting for enough money, if you're waiting for a stroke of good luck, let me be the one to tell you today, it's now. It's now to step forward and start thinking differently, create a new paradigm. Work with someone who can allow you to see a bigger vision for yourself. Cheryl Wood said it best, playtime is over. It's now, now or never. Your dreams can't wait. And I wish I could work with everybody. 
I wish that I could individually put the kind of time that I put in with the people that I work with. But there's only a handful that I can do the direct work because I like to go deep. I want to go in. I want to be able to help you get to that next level. So right on your screen, you might see that the small little ad on the bottom that says it's now or never. My dreams can't wait. And your opportunity to be able to join in a sunrise edition. See, I'm doing four and ten sessions. And along with that, an opportunity for you to join me at Frasionet 2014. See, I'm, I'm sweetening the pot, making it a little different because I want this to be a journey. This is not just four sessions and then Stacy's gone. No, no, no. I'm with you. We're going, we're going through all the way. But I can only take a handful of people this time. But I only want the serious people. I want the ones who really understand that it's now or never. Your dreams can't wait. Not the ones that make excuses because we will go ahead and, you know, we'll buy the things that we really want but don't get the things that we really need to invest in. And we get it kind of confused. And I, I, I can't convince you. And I'm not here to sell you. I'm here to work with those who are ready for this opportunity, who are ready to roll up their sleeves and work with me as we push past the things that are not easy, as we uncover and shed those things that we need to leave behind, the self-limiting beliefs, when we start to look and align by design with the individuals and partnerships that'll help us grow, when we evaluate who's in that front row of our life and leave the negative people alone. Right now, there's some people trying to call you on the phone and they have nothing good to say. Press ignore. Thank God for caller ID. We don't have time to waste. We don't have time to waste. It's now or never. Your dreams can't wait. And just for today, if you go on, I understand that there's a lot happening and you might have been investing in a lot of things, but you get the opportunity now to just put a dollar down today. Just a dollar. Just a dollar. One dollar. And you can go right now, you'll see coming up on the screen, the website, you can click actually on the link right below you and you'll see the ad. Now it's now or never. My dreams can't wait. And it'll take you straight to the page. And it's just a dollar down. You'll see what it normally costs. But today, it's a dollar down. And just with that dollar, you have 72 hours to decide what you want to do before you get billed. And then you'll get another bill in 14 days. Because this is not about the financial piece. This is about the investment in you. And I cannot work with everybody, but I want to work with those who are willing to do the work and those who are ready. There's no need to force you because you know in yourself if what I said resonated with you. You know in yourself if we're going to do this journey together. I would love to be of service. And there are many other opportunities for you to interact with me. You can go to my website and join up for the newsletter. There are free opportunities if you're not ready to invest in that level for yourself. But let's be clear that even as I speak, the world is changing, things are happening. I don't know when it'll be the last time I'm able to pour into someone. So every day God gives me, it's a blessing for me to pour into someone else. And I'm serious about this. 2014 is a whole new ball game. We're turning it up and we're playing full out because it's now or never. Your dreams can't wait. Continue to stay connected. You'll see me up here doing this work, but I'm ready to play, and I'm ready to play full out with those who understand that it's now or never. Their dreams can't wait. We're going to create your own luck, and we're going to graduate as top scholars in our Destiny Designers University. Stacey NC Grant, everybody. Thank you.